Global Opinion. Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Kopi with Chris. For the very first time after all these weeks, we are shooting off in a studio. And I've got a very special Kopi Kaki with me. My guest for this episode, we managed to drag him out from hiding. Don't know where he's been hiding all this time, but he is here and he's with me and having a cuppa. Please welcome John Molina. Hi, Chris. Thank Good to so see much. you. Good to see you. Thanks for, you know, thanks for having me on board. Eh? Thank you for having Kopi with me. Eh? <laughs> I really appreciate you being here. Cheers, mate. Cheers. 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 We must do this first customary. Mm. Yeah, nothing like Kopi or Koso. Yeah. <laughs> Kopi and Kopi or Koso. You have to watch the darn fat, you know? <laughs> You know, this circuit breaker thing has been getting all of us down. I just... I, I, put, on, I put on some pounds. Oh, man, I think all of us have lost gains and <laughs> gained the things we don't want again. Everyone, for those of you uh, at home and you don't know who John Molina is, this is where we're going to find out. So, John. Yes. Can you tell everyone, for the benefit... I've got to admit this, okay? Okay. We've got a lot of young people. Mm. And a lot of young people today may not have heard of John Molina. Sure. This is the opportunity for the young folks back home to know who you are. Okay, um, I'm John. I'm John Molina. <laughs> I've been um, performing on um, on stage uh, since the early '90s, and uh, I have worked the circuit, uh, as in you know most of the most of the top clubs in Singapore. I've worked the circuit for about uh, 20 over years, 25, 26 years now. Um, and uh, no, actually more than that. Yeah, but anyway. Well, more than that. We, <laughs> we're all going to know your age very soon, man. <laughs> and, um, and but, but I haven't been um, uh, consistent throughout. You know, I've taken sabbaticals from time to time. I've gone over, I've lived overseas, uh, you know, and I've done uh, several businesses along the way. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, perhaps that's the reason why, um, because of the lack of consistency, you know, the younger people would not, <laughs> would not know me. Yeah, the consistency is interesting. Yeah, you're saying that you had, you've been on sabbaticals, a couple of sabbaticals. We'll, right. we'll, we'll come to that in a bit. Okay. But let's go back to when you started in the circuit right. uh, in the early 90s. In the early 90s, oh, yeah. Okay. At that time, I remember, because we're about the same age. Okay, yes, we are. Yeah, everyone now by now who's been watching the show would know how old I am. <laughs> I am 50, okay. <laughs> yeah. So now you know, you know, yeah, you know about this guy. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Man, yeah, never mind. 50 is, 50 is gold, man. A new it's gold, dude. It's gold. But back then in the 90s, um, it w you started off with a band, and the band was called Kruger. Kruger, that's right. How did that happen? The, the name Kruger. Actually, there was a lot of. Um, I mean, you know, there was a lot of names that was brought up prior. To, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Prior to Kruger, um, basically, it uh, it it, uh, it derived from the character um, Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger. That's right, Freddy Krueger. No shit. It is. Yeah. So um, uh, he never dies. You know, he's a nightmare within a nightmare. You know, the bastard never dies. So, <laughs> so I thought it would be a apt name for the band. You know, hoping that the band would uh, would survive. And, uh, and we did, you know, I mean, there were a couple of uh, musicians come and go. Yeah. You know, a couple of generations of uh, musicians, but hey, man. Is the band dead here. now? No, no, we're still, we're still around, you know, every, everybody's on a, on a bit of a sabbatical. Sure, yeah. You know, because of the circuit breaker. And of course, you know, because I have, uh, I have uh, not been active, you know, I, mm -hmm. I haven't been active. Uh, so aside from the circuit breaker, I've, you know, as you know, I've done, uh, I've done a little business and, um, I've stopped doing that business, so we'll come to that whenever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we will. We will definitely come to the business <laughs> bit. Back to Kruger. You're right. saying that okay, Freddy Kruger never dies. The band Kruger hasn't yeah. died. Of the original members of the band, how many do you have left now? None. Myself. Just you. Yeah. And you're still fronting the band. I'm still fronting the band. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So over over time of a period of about 26, 27 years, I mean, you know, uh, people have come and go. Mm -hmm. uh, the longest with me is Boy, the guitar player. The, right. Uh, the boy has been with me for a good, at least like 15, I would say, 15 to 16 years. Okay. Yeah, and then the rest, um, uh, they come and go. Come so, you, so John Molina made sure, you ensured that whatever happens, the band will not die. Yeah. yeah. So how long do you intend to keep that going? Um, you know, I'm also getting on. Uh, 
the moment back. Nah, yeah, no, nah, you're <laughs> kidding me, man. Look, you're in great shape. Come on. So are you, Chris? So are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> getting too, getting too big in the face, <laughs> man. No, but I, I still, I still have got some, um, uh, definitely some musical years left. That's right. For sure. Right. Um, Shout life is still, still okay. You know, not expired, not completely expired yet. I mean, I think if you keep yourself fit. You keep yourself uh, relevant um, in terms of in terms of your delivery, not not just music alone, but in terms of what you want to do. I'm very focused on on the on the genre that mm. I, that I do. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I pluck out stuff that bands don't normally do, and um, yeah, and I and I and I do these songs, and that keeps uh, uh, the band interesting. That keeps that keeps me interesting. current, keeps current and relevant. So okay, now that you you said that, I mean, from the early '90s to today, right? And you're still keeping the band and your genre as relevant as possible, right? Keeping current, keeping right. with the times. A current, uh, sorry, current probably no. Okay, I because I don't do top forties. I, I don't. Um, I sh- I shy away from. Okay. From top. 40s okay. Because uh, that's a run of the mill. That's uh, that's that's how. All bands do it, and I don't want to be all bands. You know, I mean, great. Everybody's doing what they what they do best, and that's fantastic. You know, it's great. It's good. It's always good to see. You know, uh, bands do great covers of of the current music. But me, no, I'll, I'll pull out stuff which is a little bit um, uh, obscure. Mm-hmm. Uh, I give you an example, right? Right. Now. Yes, please. Coming back to life uh, um, by um, by uh, Pink Floyd. Oh, you know, I mean, everybody would would. Would, any band that that covers Pink Floyd would do uh, another break one. Break wall. another break the wall. Yeah, uh, but no, I'll, I'll do. I do. Of course, I do another break of the wall. But I would also pluck out stuff like um, like coming back to life, which, which is, something is not too hot. You mean? That's right. That's right. But it's also it's also a very it's a deep, heavy, uh, beautiful song. So if you if you know the song, you would you may wow. You know, if you don't know the song, you could fall in love with it. So because it's got a very good, it's it's melodious. It's uh, it's heavy, it's sexy, it's mm-hmm. dark, mm-hmm. you know, and it, yeah, have it you tells al- a story as well. Have you, always, have, have you always based the kind of music you guys play, mm. even from way back when, based right. on stuff as you just said, the obscure stuff, quote unquote, right? Uh, even from back when, when you first started out, when you started out with Kruger? No, of, of course not. I mean, when I first started out, I was just grasping at anything and everything that I could, I could do, except for tough, I was... I was still not doing top 40s. It was strange, you know. I wasn't. I knew that I wasn't. Um, I'm not an R and B. I'm not a soulful right. singer. You know, I'm. I'm you're a, a rocker. Performing, I'm a rocker. Yeah, so. that dude. You're a rocker, <laughs> man. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll do stuff that I'm comfortable with. Uh, one. Right. Two. Um, I also focus not just on on vocals, you know, but on delivery as well. I think that's really important. Okay. You know, and then you need to you couple that with with, with stage presence. It's something which you can't. You can't learn, but you can acquire. Mm-hmm. You can't learn it, but you can acquire it. Do you, you know what I mean? Yeah, and because it, that takes time. Mm-hmm. So the genre, uh, the genre also la, I mean, you know, it, you know, as you go along, sure, you you you, you kind of like you know your musical experiences widen. Mm-hmm. You know your knowledge widens as well. The more you dig, the more you see, and then oh, maybe this this would fit fit the band. This would be interesting for the. For the customers, of course, you can't sell everything at one time. Right. But you can, you know, you can, you can, you can throw, you know, out of every three songs, you throw one song in, which is a bit off, and then everybody be talking about it after. Yeah, for the whole, the whole thing, the whole stretch that you've just talked about. Right. I picked out something I want to ask you sure. about. Yeah. Stage presence mm. is something that is acquired. Correct. Yeah. You can acquire it. If right now I want to ask you, mm. how would you describe John Molina's stage presence? Ah, uh, okay, maybe perhaps that is not something. <laughs> no, you do. You don't need to use an adjective. You just need to just you know express it. How does John Molina express his stage presence? Is it sexy? Is it something that you know? It is clear. It is clear that there's an attractiveness in your stage presence. I remember watching you perform. I remember how some of the ladies go quite gaga <laughs> over you too, as well. You know. Yeah. So how would you describe that? What's that? What's that aura you exude in your stage presence? I think um, um, the, the most important aspect of, of being a live performer, mm-hmm. I think, is owning the stage. I think that's really that's really important. You okay. have to physically own the stage. You got to know. 
your space that you're working in. Right. You have to know where your musos are. Mm -hmm. Left and right, back, front, whatever. You need to know where these people stage are. Stage awareness. A stage, stage awareness. That's right, stage awareness. You need to know your space. You need mm -hmm. to work within your space. You need to know your equipment because even a mic stand can be sexy. The way you hold it, you're like holding a woman or, you know, you're making love to a mic. Something like that. Or something, some, some, something along those lines, you know. And you need to, you, you, not, you not only need to work it, but you need to believe in it as well. Mm -hmm. you, need to, you need to own it. You need to own that those moments and you need to emphasize on, on certain uh, 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 certain lines of, of the song that you want to that you want to bring forward that you want to express to the crowd so so gestures here and there. I mean th these are these are important the littlest things are the most important things to me okay yeah you know what you said about holding on to that mic stand as right. if it's a woman right can I just guess make a wild guess right you have your hand on the mic at the top and you have your other hand right at the bottom of the brain. Right. right right there, right? Right there. I'm going to say something you might not like, but <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask. It. I'm going to ask. In Singapore, mm. of all the front men of bands, Douglas Oliver. You and I, we've got, we're on the same wavelength, man. I need to take something off someone as great as him and... Uh, and he was one that I was I was completely mesmerized with um, from the time that I, I was a waiter. I was a waiter back, um, you know, uh, when I was 14 or 15 and he was really performing. Where was this? Fire? No, 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 no. Way before Fire, mate. Rainbow. Uh, Rainbow, that's right. Culture shock. Culture shock. There we go. There you go, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was, I was a server there. It's yeah. weird, man, because I used to go to Rainbow. You were working there and we did you get me. Oh dude, oh trust <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, we, we, we got it, we got it, we got it. And you Those know times, yeah. yeah, man, then I mean geez, at fourteen. It doesn't matter now, I'm fifty years old, so you can't catch me for this <laughs> shit. At fourteen I used to drag you know, squeeze myself into Tavern on the Square, you remember? Oh, yeah. <laughs> where Gingerbread was playing before yeah. and where Tokyo Square was playing. Yeah. And I went in there to just watch yeah. these guys playing. These people yeah. were influences. I completely can completely feel you there. But Rainbow. Rainbow me. Wow. 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 What, what, a, what a joint me. Oh man, nothing like Rainbow. Nothing like, nothing like, nothing it. like it, yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah, many, many would say that uh, Fire was Douglas's swan song. Yeah. You know, like swan song, but Rainbow was. Rainbow was. was yeah. Rainbow was it, though. That was a rock joint. Oh, yeah. Through and through. Yeah. But you know. Rainbow was sex. You know, oh, yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love making love. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Raw heart sex. Yeah. Rainbow. Rainbow sexy. Yeah. But Culture Shock, yeah, D Douglas was playing. Uh, he was singing for, this is the lead guy for Culture Shock Just way back when. But you know what's funny, man, hearing this, I'm, I'm kind of like uh, surprised. Why? Oh, because, because it, at those times, uh, there were a lot of great, fantastic bands. Yeah, and seriously, yeah. a lot of speedway and all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. K. Yeah. Harvey, the hang loose. Oh, man, hang loose. Oh, gosh, <laughs> Iskander yeah. was playing. Oh, man, yeah, I remember. Pieces, yeah. Oh, mm, mm. yeah, yeah. What a, yeah. What a, yeah. What a outfit. Yeah. yeah. So there were great, great, fantastic bands. However, mm. however, very few fronters that that could mesmerize or that owns the stage. Yeah, like Douglas does. You know, he was, he was special, uh, I'm surprised. You know why, John? You know why I'm surprised? Yeah. Because a lot of people, and I got to admit, mm -hmm. myself included, mm -hmm. always thought that you and Dougie, Douglas O, mm -hmm. have a rivalry. Oh, no. No, I, I, oh, no. Let's get this out. Let's get, get this out of the way. Because, yeah, because you know why? Because, no, because of my first uh, newspaper um, um, yeah, yeah, I, I remember so it like was yesterday. Fun. Yeah, it was so bad. It was. It was, it was, it was Why it was, was it bad? Why was it bad? You know, it was a full page. I think it was the second section, which is on Sunday. Yeah. So it's a full full spread. Full spread. Yeah. Color. Yeah. It sees headlines move over Douglas Oak. Yeah. Uh, I I didn't know they were gonna do it that way. You know? Right. Uh, but oh gosh, you know, and and from then on, um, you know, that's how. That's how the rumor is it a rumor? Not only that, but that's that's also the beginning of uh, the beginning mm -hmm. of Kruger, the beginning of me, la, right? Of rising. So, so, uh, but but yeah, that was also the beginning of the rumor as well. Yeah. So so, so that's why that you know. Made me a bit uncomfortable actually because I have only deep the deepest respect um, for Douglas. 
for a person like for a performer like Douglas. So you know, I'm glad you're saying this on this show because uh, uh, energy and the guys in energy and Dougie, if you're listening, John yeah. Molina has just paid tribute to you, man. Not only Douglas, I mean the entire band as well. You know. Like, yeah, yeah, they're great. They're great guys. Great guys. But this is something that we've always wondered. Can you it's imagine for someone like me, right? I'm not in the circuit like you guys. Well, I, you are. You well, are yeah, yeah, kind of like an alternate circuit, <laughs> but you know, like a parallel universe yeah, to where, yeah, where you guys are. But uh, all I want to say is, is that people like me, even me, yeah. I know you, I know Douglas, but I've never had the courage to ask until today. Now I'm asking you. Mm. <laughs> Excuse me, if I were to flip the whole thing over and see right. Douglas sitting around, I'd be asking him the same question. Right. Has there ever been a rivalry between John Molina and yourself? You know, and not, not that I'm asking that question now that John Molina is seated in front of me. Right. Can you tell me, do you think Douglas feels that way? No, absolutely not. Okay, I, I tell you why. Ah, please. Because he's first. He's first. And when you're first, there's, no, there's nothing to, to take. I mean, there's nothing, nothing to feel threatened about because you're first. I mean, he's first, you know. Maybe I would feel threatened by somebody else. Right. In in in, the, in that sense. Okay. But definitely not him. Have I mean, you? He's done it all. He's seen it all. Yeah. You know, he's he's been he's gone through the distance. Yeah. He's seen it. I mean, he's. Yeah, he has my absolute respect oh, as well. I can tell you that much. I I, I I've, he's magnetic he's on magnetic. stage. Yeah. That guy is so electric. My goodness, I used to queue in yeah. front of the places where he used to play before. Like every Friday night, you know, together with a wife. And we would queue for an hour to just get in and walk. Just yeah. to be there every Friday night. I still remember booking out, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Friday would be the place to go because that, yeah. that is what I want to watch. All the rest yeah. of the guys would check out chicks and stuff. And yeah. they would always go watch the band. Yeah, same. Just, that was just entire Just the whole thing. Tight. Yeah. yeah. So Kruger was tight too, man. But we we took a leave from them now. We took a leave from mm. from um, from from energy mm -hmm. and, and you know and uh, but of course you know over over time you evolve we, in we, your yeah, own. We develop our own style. You, the, you said that you don't fear Douglas. You never did. Which you admired him. No, you respect. He doesn't fear. He doesn't fear yeah. you. Okay, but do you, is there anyone that you actually feel that you know that you had to compete with um, throughout no, the time I've that never, you've been? I've never. I've never had that. Uh, I'm not. I'm not saying this arrogantly. Uh, no, no. Please, I, please say whatever you want. No, yeah. no judgments. No, me. I, I've never. I've never thought mm -hmm. of um, of of com competition. Of competition. No. Okay. I've never, I, to me, uh, a lot of these people were artists in in their own right. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got their, you know, the good stuff about them, and I and I enjoy watching. Um, you know, many other people as well. Right. Like Shirley, Shirley made the unexpected. She's such a, she's a great singer, mm -hmm. a great performer. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, she used to, she used to come uh, watch us, you know, when, when, mm -hmm. she, when she first started out. So, you know, she's, she's, a, she's a nice person, a good friend as well. So she's one of those, you know, that I, that I regard as wow, you know. Mm. Uh, um, yeah. But so, I need to ask you, man, last year, November, November thirtieth and the, or this or December the first, whichever two dates, were you at U two when was, they were in Singapore? Was, did it drive you nuts, man? Did, did, fucking did. a, did I did? Oh, fucking I, a, I, man! I, what a concert, it, man! It's surreal. It was. Oh surreal. yeah. It was surreal. I mean, you know. I was in tears. See, <laughs> see I, I tell because I, I I just couldn't believe that I was I was there. Yeah. I couldn't believe that I was in the presence Likewise. of Bono. Oh, no. And and you told me this yeah. is YouTube. Man. Yeah, it's YouTube, yeah. man. It's YouTube. <laughs> I think uh, I can safe to say that the guys of our generation, if there's any basis at all, Ben, when, when it comes to the love of music, is uh, for mo for many of us, it's like Joshua Tree, right? YouTube, Joshua Tree, YouTube, yeah. Rattle and Hum, right? Yeah. And a lot of us, I can tell you, I met so many of my friends. Right in that stadium when I was there for this concert. Um, but is, is it safe for me to say that U2 was one of your biggest influences? influences yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, not only because of, um, I mean, of who they were. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they were one of, uh, definitely one of the greatest bands that, you know, of, of our time. Right. Um, even until now. Oh, yeah. Still, they're still top 10. Yeah. Um, but also of their... Of, of their style of, 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 you know, of performing. They were great live performers. Yeah. You know, if you watch Rattle and Hum, the video, I mean, oh. 
Oh, man. Because, yeah, that's, that's my favorite music video. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, that one. Yeah. No one, no one can touch it. Like, Doesn't come close. Yeah. <laughs> no one comes close. The best music video ever. Yeah. And, um, and uh, it, it's, it's the way that they write, the style that they write. Yeah. You know, and it's, you know every, everything about Bono is just, it just exudes, you know, it just, that's what a rock outfit should do. Right. 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 So what, what then, therefore, would be your pet peeve? when it comes to other musicians? My pet peeve. I think when, um, when musos uh, talk about other people, yeah. I think that, that, that pisses me off. No, because I think that they should use the time to, uh, to practice, to put their time to better use than right. to talk rubbish about other people. And exa that's exactly what Iskandar Junior said to me when I first started out. I took his advice very well. Mm -hmm. He said, John, don't end up. I hope. I hope that this doesn't go against him. <laughs> no, I but don't think it like will. 20, don't worry. Twenty-six years ago, but yeah. he said this to me. He said, "Don't end up like a Newton musician. You know the ones that Newton. <laughs> like those days, you right. know, everybody fucking go to Newton, yeah. get drunk after after work, yeah, Marvel, because you could drink till morning, yeah, and then you talk rubbish about that. That's good and advice. Not every musician does that, of course. I know. I'm talking about you know yeah. just the uh, just a few of. Like, Names I've never mentioned, but right. yeah, he was he was referring to to categories like that. You know, don't be a professional. Is saying be professional. Yeah, yeah. Be, be driven. Be be um, you know be driven. Be um, um, he, he's always talking. Keep keep it real. Keep it, keep focusing on what you wanna what you wanna do. You know? That being said, um, we have a lot of young musicians today. Right. Right. Um, would you give them the same advice? Yes, I would. Do you think it's more rampant today that these these guys? No, are... it's not. It's so different now. Mm -hmm. So different now because of the um, uh, social media. Right. You know, you've got your internet. I mean, it's 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 a different it's a different ball game now mm -hmm. for a lot of musicians. And a lot of musicians are bedroom musicians. Come good, <laughs> right? Yeah. A lot of them, you know, start in the bedroom. Come, you know, and 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 now they're playing in gigs. You mm -hmm. know, a lot of it are acoustic. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of it are acoustic. So they don't they don't they don't face the 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 hardships or, or the challenges, I would say, right. of being in a, in a big band outfit, okay. you know, you know of, of getting people together to rehearse, getting the time done, getting the songs. You, you're just yourself, you know, mm -hmm. maybe just one more musician and then, you know, it's either one of you that calls the shots and, and that's it. Okay. So it's a lot easier now. So yeah, your advice to them is to still make, make sure that you, you do your gig, you do well at it, you practice, be humble about things, don't right. end up being a damn alcoholic, right? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, which is still that kind of advice is still very still value relevant. value based and, and, and relevant, yeah. So the thing is that you mentioned earlier, and I want to come to this bit. Okay. The sabbaticals, John Molina. Too. <laughs> My famous sabbaticals. <laughs> the, that created all of your inconsistencies. <laughs> okay. So so the inconsistencies. I don't know where that one came from. It's your idea, but and I didn't suggest the inconsistency. Uh, but the thing is, is. You took sabbaticals. Now, one thing I do know mm. is that uh, John Molina had something going on with the Berlin Bar. Mm, that's right. That, that's recent. That, that's my recent. Uh, you mean there were more before this? Oh yeah, a lot more. Can I'm we not, start I'm from? The, can we start from the top, man? From the beginning. Yeah. I think the first sabbatical I took was to do a diving business. Okay. Yeah, to do a diving business. I did it for about a year and a half. Uh huh. Um, I had a shop. Right. Um, and I, and I conduct diving, um, Co courses. Uh, yeah, that's right. Courses. And I, of course I dive, mm -hmm. you know, I dive. I, the reason why I did it was because I, um, I, f I fell in love with the sport. I right. fell in love with it, you know, this recreational sport. I fell deeply in love with it. And, um, and I love the camaraderie, you know, with, uh, with my friends and, and the people that I meet. Right. And, um, it was something that I, that I wanted to. Um, that, okay, it was it was I just wanted to get away from music for a little bit, and and and, and it happens it happened to me throughout you know all these years ago, all these really? like, twenty five years or so yeah. yeah but you think you got tired stop, of music? I mean, not tired. I just wanted to, to. Okay, okay. How do I put this? Uh, many people have told me. Many people who are close to me have told me mm -hmm. that I am an introvert. I'm actually no. Golf. <laughs> <laughs> This, this I cannot say for myself. It's the it's a testimony of many, many people who are close to me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, John Molina is an introvert. Yeah, right. No way. Yeah. Okay. 
So, so here's the introvert has been talking his ass off from the moment the show started, and he's telling me he's an introvert. No, but uh, yeah. So I, I, I do need um, uh, you know time for myself and mm-hmm. to get away. Just, just for so just because you were tired of performing. No, no, I just wanted to do something different. I wanted to do something. Yeah. Just to see, try something new. Try something new. Yeah. Okay. And I had youth, of course, on my side. I was in my twenties. Oh wow! You, you, you know, stepped away at. In your 20s? In mm, my 20s. I think my mid-20s, yeah. Because I started performing when I was 22. Okay. Yeah. So a couple of years later, you decided to just, okay, this, I'm just going to start the diving thing. I love the diving thing. I started a diving business and you had it for a year and a half, you were saying. A year and a half. And then what happened? Then I came back to diving again. i uh, sorry, I came back to performing again. Okay. What happened to the diving business? I um, sold it, yeah. So you had it for a year and a half. Right. And uh, what happened? You 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 sold the business sold off, the business. and that's good because you know why. As I you know, selling it off it is better than winding it down, <laughs> right? You, you, me, complete, I, you didn't lose your trousers doing that. I mean, I, I think in all businesses that there are always highs and lows and yeah, yeah, and sure, whatnot, yeah. sure. But I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that you sold that one off. Then you came back to music. And I went back to music. What did you do? I um, I went to play in fire. No, no. Uh, um, a subsidiary of fire, which is uh, Sparks. Sparks. Yeah, it was at Sparks. Wow, that's one more joint, man. I tell you, talking to your memories come flooding back. And I played side by side with Energy. Oh, imagine? you saw this Energy and Kruger. That's right. That's right. So, did you? How do you feel about that? How do you feel about the fact that uh, Kruger is going to be playing? You I know, felt alternating it was, with uh, on a live uh, on a live platform, right? Mm-hmm. To me, that was like um, like a dream come true, lah. You know, wow! I mean, to to be with my idols, you know. Wow! In that, in that sense, yeah. Even wow. though, even though I've already sort of like paid my dues, but wow, to be side by side with these guys, yeah. Bloody you know, hell! In break time, you know, you're sitting down, you're talking, and you're know, it's unbelievable experience, yeah. But but these guys, I mean, of course, they were humble, really great, uh, regular guys, you know. And um, uh, very soon, I found out that hey, you know. Yeah, well, there, there's always going to be someone or some people, you know, that you know that whatever happens, you we will always be walking in their shadow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I can complete, I can completely understand. I'm a big fan of energy. I'm a big fan of uh, Douglas O. Yeah. You know, and yeah. and I'm glad to also say that I, I think it's safe for me to say this. He's going to go on air. I'm going to say that they're yeah, friends as well. You know, it's just, it's 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 yeah. nice. They're nice people, and they're great performers, great musos, really. Um, so now that that this has happened, you went back. You went to Sparks and you played Kruger played at right, Sparks right. in Neon City and back back in back when way back when. What happened after that? After that, uh, I stopped again. Mm-hmm. I stopped again after, after I think Sparks was like two years or something like that, or two years plus, or almost three years. Like well, that's quite a while. Yeah, yeah, quite a while. Yeah. All the clubs I've been to, like Europa and all that, it's always been. Oh, now I'm hearing another name, Europa. Yeah, Europa was the first, uh, oh, well, not the first, but the first long-term contract I had. So where, so where, football. which Europa did you play in back then? All. All of Dennis Fu's Europas? All of the outlets, yeah. Wow. I, I first started out in Changi, of course, you know, Changi Europa, and then I moved to East Coast, and then to Ridley's, and then to Xenadu, and then, but later on, you know, um, um, they had this idea that all the bands should do the circuit. Ah, the rotate around, the, 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 yeah. The, the rotate, the rotating, yeah. sorry. No, don't worry about it, man. Mike's like bulletproof. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I was with them for about three, uh, three, almost four years, I think. Uh huh. Quite a while. Yeah. Uh huh. I mean, for the, for those young people at home, once again, you don't know what you, you guys don't know what you what you what you've missed, uh, John, because Europa was like whoa, the place, to go the to place. Yeah. the bands in Europa, yeah, so Europa. many out of your outlets, Fantastic right? Fantastic bands. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I remember so many of them, Gino, Expo, yeah. The Boys and all yeah, that. Oh, boys, yeah. Amazing, yeah. man, amazing. Yeah. A lot of good bands. Yeah. So, okay, so you were in Sparks. What happened after the two years plus? I stopped to go to... <laughs> Yet another sabbatical. Another, another okay. famous, infamous sabbatical. But this time I was in Phuket. Phuket? I, was, I lived in Phuket for about two years this time. Oh, wow. And uh, I sold um, I sold satay in Phuket. Me. I, no, I'm not me. John Molina I became a satay guy. Yeah, I sold satay. Okay. In Phuket. I lived in Phuket for two years. Nothing wrong with selling satay. Don't no, no, nothing, nothing wrong, nothing wrong, man. But, but it's, 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 it, was, it was a crazy thing to do. Okay, and the reason, the reason why I did it was because I used to write 
I used to ride motorbikes right. to, up to Phuket. Um, you know, from so Singapore. Yeah, right all the way up. Ooh. You know, so we, we're always doing this every every few months. You know, okay. Me and my you know, my friends, and it's uh, basically this mo- motorbike gang gang. Gang. Oh. It's uh, it's helmed by my father, my dad. Okay. My late father. Okay. Who was an who uh, was an avid rider. Okay. And uh, you know, so I followed soon now. You know, and then um, and then uh, we had all these bunch of friends that. Uh, that we were right up with. Mm-hmm. And in Phuket, he, my, my father had, mm-hmm. a, had a childhood friend who's a Singaporean guy who's been in Phuket for about 20 years. Okay. And who was there as the GM of a hotel. Okay. And uh, after much talking and all that, um, my dad decided to, to, um, to want to do something there. Okay. And uh, so I said, Dad, you know, if you were to do a business here, you would be, you would miss your riding, you'd be going up and down, you know, Mm-hmm. Why don't I do it? You know, you tell me what your plans are. Okay. Do it. So myself and another friend went to do the business. Can you can you imagine? You know, I'm trying to. <laughs> I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to imagine this. Yeah. He quit his job. I quit singing. Okay. And I actually, yeah, because I wanted to live the beach life also in that in that sense. You know, back then I was in nineteen. I mean, you're a diver. You're a diver. Yeah, so you would love it. Then, yeah. uh-huh. And. Um, I sold satay, me. You know, I sold satay. Okay, okay, okay. When you saying you sold satay, let me just get this right here. You, you, you got yourself a push cart? No, no, no. We, we supplied, we supplied satay. We. It's just what's in my head? It's John in probably a beach sarong, bare body, with a push cart, and then he's got charcoals and all set up. And he's like, oh, okay. But but before we did the sati business, it was um, we did a research on how sati should be, <laughs> okay. should be made for about a year, you know, in Singapore before I actually, you know, because my dad wanted to do. Is that that intricate? Do you got to do is. research for a year or oh, yeah. two? Right? For a year, yeah. So it's food tasting almost every week, almost every okay. week okay. for a year. Before we got the recipe right, and then you then you started the business. Yeah, I started the business. And what kind of place was this? This was in uh, Phuket. I mean, I lived in Phuket Town, so I yeah. rented a four room, a four story, uh, a commercial apartment. Right. A building. Okay. So on the first floor would be my production house. Uh, that's where my staff would come in to um, to skew the meat, to prepare, okay. to do all the prep work and all that, and to store it into uh-huh. um, refrigerators and, uh-huh. and whatnot. And that's, that's where my um, uh, uh, that's where the that's where the production house is. The production part of it is second floor will be the office, mm-hmm. right? Um, uh, that's where we do our sure. calls and our businesses and yeah. all. We conduct all our stuff. And third floor is my my bedroom, my room. <laughs> and the fourth floor is the laundry place, which is the rooftop. Means my boxing uh, okay. bag as well. So. Okay, <laughs> okay. So 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 this is yeah. what this is like 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 mass produced sati. Mass produced satay. So yeah. it wasn't a restaurant. All by hand. All by hand. Ah, okay. Yeah, so, so you were supplying satay. I was supplying satay. Ah. Yeah. When I say sold, so, when I say sell satay, I mean supply satay lah. And you were there for how long again in Phuket? Two years. Two years. Yeah, two then years. what happened? Um, I left because I wanted to, I wanted to perform again. So the bug came back. Yeah, the bug came back. So my partner actually carried on. Right. He okay. carried on until tsunami. Until the tsunami happened. Oh shit. Yeah, so it's quite a crazy story. But he survived. He survived it. And, and the uh, business was it was it hit by the tsunami? Of course. I mean, everything was hit by the tsunami. Hey, wh- which part of Phuket was this? Don't mind me asking. Um, you mean the where the, 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 the location of the, your business in Phuket? Oh, mine's in Tanon Libuk, which is in the uh, Phuket town. In I was Phuket located, town. So it, I, there wasn't. I mean, you know, we weren't. It wasn't hit by. The, but the it wasn't hit by a wave. Applied to. Right, it's right. all the beach hotels, and yeah. you know, I mean, it's all along. It's dotted, yeah. but all the hotels are dotted. Yeah. Along so there's no one to there. supply to anymore. Yeah, and not only that, I mean, it was a horrible time. For of course, of course, you know? yeah, of course. So, but you left already. You left. I Phuket left already. already. Yeah, I left Phuket already. Wow. Yeah. And and yeah. after, after the after the the, the that that tragic incident, mm-hmm. what happened to the satay business? Um, after that, my partner folded it. Right. And then he came back to Singapore because I think he could not carry on uh, it was it was quite bad you know yeah. um, he, because he painful. actually volunteered for a couple of uh, months I think for three months to clear to the help the clean up and as interpre- um, you know, interpreter uh, as well. interpreter yeah. yeah wow so wow. it was quite it was quite horrifying for him wow um, it was a very bad time for him I'm pretty sure yeah. man 
I'm sorry to hear about that. Yeah, I'm sorry to me. Yeah. So you came back uh, to Singapore two right. years after Phuket, mm-hmm. and you, because you had you got the bug to perform again, right? So, so I performed in several clubs. Um, I was in Mets, and then I went to China Bar. Oh. In China Bar, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. when I sort of like uh, resurrected the band again in that sense. And then after that, I went to Rouge, which was a okay. classy, uh, cool place. Okay. And, yeah. And you played in several places for how long? I think um, a good maybe six years I was running well, the that's circuit. A, that's a quite a stretch. No, it's quite a stretch, yeah. Before your next sabbatical. Yeah. <laughs> Before oh, my next sabbatical, yeah, that's right. <laughs> But this time, <laughs> word of the day, word of the day today, I'm going to bring it home with me, would be the word called sabbatical. Yeah? Now it's making, tempting me to go and take a sabbatical, you know? I'm all in one hour, right? We're one night. So, okay. So the next sabbatical, six years. So you took yeah. another sabbatical. Do what? Um, this time around, I, uh, I was in Bali. I was in Bali. I lived in Bali for about. I give up, man. <laughs> oh, two years. I, as well. I, I, I freaking give up, man. Okay, so Phuket, Phuket, yeah. and then now you're in Bali. Okay, <laughs> I was in Bali. My favorite place, just to let you know. I mean, I, I that's like my second home. Same. Yeah, I love I mean, Bali. I, I, I felt. Actually, I fell in love with it a long time ago. Any, that, anyone would fall in love yeah, with Bali. Bali is just magical. Yeah, it's a magical place. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so what happened with that? I. Um, I, uh, a, fr- a, fr- a good friend of mine uh, who has been living there prior, uh-huh. prior to me going up there, um, he started um, a restaurant, a Chinese restaurant, right. together with um, some Indonesians and some local people, all together, the five of us. Right. And so I'm the... Don't mind me asking, man, what was the joint called? Shinoseri. Shinoseri? Yeah. Okay. Shinoseri. Yeah. Okay. Which is uh, uh, basically Chinese. Like, in, in, yeah, Shinoa. Yeah, 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 Shinoa. In yeah. French. Mm. Yeah, in French. That's right. So... So we had a, a, a sort of like a, a high class, you know, a, a joint. <laughs> yeah, he wanted a, a high class joint for Zi Chan. Oh no! So, oh sorry. So, <laughs> but it was cool. It was a cool concept, you know. Yeah. And he had his ideas and all that. You can you um, you'll grow on you yeah. grow on me for after a while. Yeah. Okay. So among all the partners, anyway, I'm the I'm the I'm the smallest uh, shareholder. Right. But I'm the I'm the active shareholder like, in that sense, uh, And um, so my job or rather the, the scope of my work was to go in in the morning, right? To go uh-huh. in the morning to the office uh-huh. so that everybody could greet me. Pagi pa, pagi pa, you know. That? And I'll flip open my laptop, and I'll check the tides, right? So okay. I, can go to, I can go do my surfing, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. You just sit down and check <laughs> the tides, man. My slippers and my Oh and God, my I want your life. Yeah, yeah. all right. <laughs> <laughs> so after I do with all my, you know, my, my, my pleasantries, I would go off. <laughs> And my first bin tang at eleven o'clock in the morning. My first serve. Oh yeah. Oh man, you know something? I don't. I, I don't know whether this is still true to this to this to, to, to this day. Right. Bin tang beer. Right. You cannot imagine how many you know singlets I've got. The bin tang beer. Yeah, you, know, no. you know. You know. You know. Bin tang <laughs> beer. Star. Yeah. 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 Tang. Man, I got so many of that shit. You know, because I go to Bali so often, often right? Yeah. So the thing is, is that when it comes to bin tang beer. You can't get it in Singapore. Is that strange, yeah? That is fucking weird, it's man. It's national beer. Yeah, and it's it, strange. It is weird, and you know, honestly, this is Pilsner, right? It's not it's lager. Pilsner, yeah, yeah, you can't, yeah. You can't get drunk. I love Pilsner. Pilsner. Yeah, yeah, you, you can't, can't get, get drunk. drunk man. I, you can't, you know. And if you ask me, it's the it is such a love, and I don't I drink. Love. I don't drink. I'm oh, a okay. teetotaler. Oh, but okay. when I'm in. Bali. You don't mind a bin I don't too. mind a bin tang because of the go. heat, man. And you know, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the yeah. best thing to cool off is with a freaking bottle of bin tang beer. Watch right? the sunset. But you can't get it here. Strange. Yeah. It's weird. That's the thing. I thought maybe you would know, you know, but because no, whether I, anyone's supplying bin tang beer. No. There isn't this zero bin tang beer in Singapore. <laughs> zero, man. I can't freaking find one, you know. And I don't drink, but I love that shit. Actually, beer. Actually, me, you're right, you know. I, yeah, I yeah, not, not, I've never yeah. really looked into it, but yeah. dang, yeah. The closest isn't... thing you can get to a bin tang, and I'm going to be quite loose about this, would be like maybe Corona. Mm, but then yeah, again. But, yeah, but then, then again. Gonna, yeah, then, again, you know, then yeah. again, you know. But you can just can't get something yeah. like that here. And no, you can't, the yeah. weird part, it's just next door. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, and then why the f*** isn't bin tang beer in Singapore, right? And these guys are like our freaking neighbors, you know. <laughs> That's right. You know. And so I just, it's just, just, 
Jack just don't get that. <laughs> so okay, you you Shinwa Sare, <laughs> and this is not the one at the Hyatt Hotel a long time ago. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. no. Uh, yeah. Far from it. Far from it. <laughs> so what happened with that one? You were doing, you know, coming in, going pagi bapa. So you yeah. you got your job, pagi bapa. You got your job. You open your your laptop. You check tight times, tight times. <laughs> Flip flops come out, and the board comes out. I'm gonna wax my freaking board cool. into the water, right? Yeah. And and then then what else? What happened? And then um, you know, after after two years of of doing this uh, beautiful mindless thing, yeah, um, beautiful mindless, mindless beautiful, it's gorgeous. Because I would catch the sunset every day without fail. Oh fuck! Yeah. Every day. Yeah. It's 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 it was religious. Like, Jim Barron. Uh, no, I would be in a uh, kuta. Kuta. Okay. Kuta. Jim Barron sunsets. Oh wow. Yeah, it's fantastic, oh, wow. lah. Yeah. It's fantastic. So, yeah, that was my life for, for about two years. And then I um, then I got the bug again. Oh, but this time I was called by uh, Bernard, Bernard Lim ah, okay. of the Life Brands. Oh, he Life called Brands. me back. Okay. And uh, he wanted me to to um, to play in one of his clubs. So you sold your shares at Shiran Saray? No, we're still there. Was I, oh, I you still I have it? Um, I still have it. That's cool. Uh, uh, they, they still carried on with the business. So the business is still going on? Um, as of, I think about seven years ago, then they, then they sold it. Ah, okay. Yeah. But it's the business that was sold. It was the business that was sold. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. Yeah, one of the one of the operators they acquired the, the land. It's quite a big place there. It was right. about ten thousand square feet. Mm-hmm. About ten thousand square feet. Can you imagine? Ten thousand mm-hmm. square feet. Um the thing is is that mm. uh, two years there you came back and Bernard Lim, Bernard Lim. He's definitely going to be watching this show. I'm going to tag him. <laughs> yeah, Bernard, you're going to watch this. You're mentioned on the show. Yeah. So, uh, Bernard Lim, he was with Live Brands then. Live so Brands. So, he, he asked yeah. you to come back. He asked me to talk to me. And, and you had the bug. Then I had, yeah, of course, I had the bug at the same time. You and don't have this permanent bug. Huh? It just keeps yeah, coming, nah. biting you every now and then. On, fight off, and on, off, on, off, on, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so I, I, worked for, um, I worked for him for, a, uh, for about two, no, three years. Was this Aquanova? No, actually, it was Yellow Jello. Yellow he put Jello. me in Yellow Jello. It was successful, and mm-hmm. then um, he decided to convert Aquanova, which was back then it was called Clinic. Oh yeah, or yeah, like that. that's yeah. it. Yeah, Clinic. yeah. So he wanted to convert it into an English club, and mm-hmm. uh, and then uh, he got, uh, you know, he got the band in as well as Jive Talking, from mm-hmm. because Jive Talking ended their 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 uh, contract, contract with uh, Palm Room, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, you know, it was two bands in right. under one house. It was fantastic, right? So was it Kruger still? It was Kruger still, yeah. But so two bands. So Kruger Alia was, and but Kruger at the time, um, um, we had uh, new additions um, in order to in order to carry on. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, no, not carry on. Cater to cater to to the size of Aquanova. So it was it was my idea to bring Alia in. I think right. you know, of course. You I know, know Alia. Hey, uh, Madam uh, Alia, you mentioned too. <laughs> yes. Yeah, she's she's awesome, and then there's yeah, Patrick is. as well. You know, Patrick, the um, the Filipino singer. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Yeah. So that's they, right. They worked yes. together, right? Um, Patrick with, uh, mm-hmm. with uh, Dennis Fu a long time ago. So, yeah, the two of them came into the outfit, and um, and that's that's how. Hang on a second. You mm. mean Alia D mm. was in Kruger? She was in Kruger. Yeah. Wow. Okay, that one yeah. I didn't really know. I know she knows you. She worked with you, but I didn't know she was in Kruger. Yeah, she's in Kruger. Okay. I couldn't. I couldn't change name back then because you know um, I still wanted to keep that 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 part. Mm-hmm. You know, I wanted to keep the name. Um, and and uh, Bernard was gracious enough to to you know to say you know, just just leave the name lah. You know. Okay. Yeah, so I was there for uh, three years, I think. I mean, all together lah. Okay. For three years, and then I left, and then I went to do. Um, I I worked in the Beacon. Okay. The Beacon for a while. That's when you came, I think. Uh, one of those yes, nights, yeah. I did. Yeah. Yes, and yes. We, that was when I I came. Sporadically, you would come. You, we had you know, a chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah we had a chat. Yes. Yeah, Correct. yeah. Anyway, you know, um, uh, the beacon was for a short while. Reason being because I wanted to do something on my own. I was looking for a place mm-hmm. to set up something on my own this time round. So this, this is time, the Berlin Bar story. This is the now. Berlin Bar story now. Okay. Yeah. So all this is leading up to the Berlin Bar story now. Okay. Mm. And how did that happen? Uh, I I um I've always wanted to do something on my own. Okay. Actually, for for a while already, you right. know, coming you know in my mid forties, I've I was thinking maybe it's a good time to to um to start something on my to own. venture on to venture out on my own, and um yeah, and it was a it was a good time to 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 start because of the experiences that I had, you know, and mm-hmm. um, also because I I did have a decent following. Right. So yeah, you have two Facebook pages, man. 
Yeah, yeah, because they're fuller. That's why the pitch, the pitch is lim- limitless. So, pitch is easier. Yeah, in a sense. But anyway, yeah. So, yeah. So I started. Uh, start, I started the Berlin Bar with a partner of mine, and um, you know we did we did fairly well uh-huh. uh, for about five years, and then um, fairly then, uh, well. That's an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on, come on! Don't underplay that because <laughs> Berlin Bar was packed to the damn yeah. rafters, man. Yeah, it was a good place. It was a good yeah, place. It was a good yeah. place. It was a good concept, also. I mean, we were we were quite we were quite clear about what we wanted to do. Right. Um, it had to uh, be away from from the wrestler in that mm-hmm. sense, like, because you know everybody everybody have got strong concepts and and whatnot. And we just wanted to be different. Uh, so it was uh, it was a retro sort of like a retro bar. Yeah. In that sense, um, and. Um, uh, the, the live band would, would play rock music and then the DJ would play uh, retro music and have food as well. Was Kruger uh, playing there? Kruger was playing there. Yeah, okay. So I reformed Kruger. Again. And you were still singing although you were in Berlin Bar. I was singing but um, I was only singing on the weekends. Okay. And and my singing bit came on later on I think on the third year. Okay. It came on you know it just came on um, uh, later and then, then it, it's like um Sporadic, as in, as in, I would I would appear for three songs mm-hmm. on the weekends, and then I'll. So what happened in Berlin Bar? Um, what happened? And it, 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 is it still open? No, no, no. It's closed. Um, it's closed permanently since January this year. This year, after after the, five years. After five years, yeah. So January. Hang on. Was it because it was planned to be closed, or is it can't be a circuit breaker? It couldn't have been caused Before. by. Just oh, before, right. just before it hit in, yeah. yeah. Okay, because it was the end of the end of the lease, and okay. I had a, I had a, uh, you know, the the um, the option whether should I renew it or not. Okay. And I thought to myself at that time, you can see already that um, you know the it was dipping already, you know, because everything is a lifespan, right? You know, sure. everything is a lifespan, and I was, you know, and I was I was telling myself maybe this is a good time to, to stop. And you stopped it, as in closed it down. You closed didn't it sell down. it off. I didn't sell it off. I closed it down. My. Yeah. I'm going to ask. You know I'm going to ask, right? Mm. Lost money? Made money? Definitely, didn't lose money? Definitely lost money. That's for sure. I mean, you know, that's that's how uh, that's how a business is. Painful, right? huh? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, so you, you think it was a... Well, shouldn't ask that question because probably was a better move because April, everyone got screwed. Actually, it was before that already. It was it was getting yeah, but bad. But if you didn't March, close it in it was January, bad, man, you would have been yeah, even worse. Absolutely, mate. Right? Absolutely. Can, can you imagine? I mean, you know, you've got to. Oh my gosh, I can't. I can't imagine the implications, lah. Yeah, exactly. You know, because I've seen some of my friends. You know, yeah. I'm not going to mention it, but you know, these are. Oh my gosh, you know the shit that I mean, they go through. Kobe, no joke, man. Chris, uh, on my show, we, uh, uh, one of the episodes, the second episode of this show, right. I, I had the FNB guys, some of the players, FNB guys, on my show. And we were discussing and talking mm. about it. I mean, man, it's it's not a good place to be. No. During this time. No. Uh, it's very it's bad not. time. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, in hindsight, in hindsight, if you think about it, uh, having made a decision to just you know, earlier on before January, I'm pretty mm. sure the discussions would have happened. Oh yeah, before hell that. yeah. yeah. And you guys shut it down. I mean, it yeah. may not have been such a bad thing. Actually, I was um, I was also in the midst of looking for a smaller. A smaller place, a more manageable place, because I was in um, I was in Chimes, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm, yeah, and uh, and 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 it was in town, and mm-hmm. rentals there, you know. I mean, yeah, you know, sure, your yeah. prime prime location, beautiful. Yeah. It's a beautiful place, Chimes. It is it's gorgeous. Yeah. Landlords are fantastic, mm-hmm. but it's huge, you know. It's big, and um, perhaps you know, if 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 I had downscaled it, maybe in a different place, mm-hmm. it would have been. You know, well, better, I've got like, great memories in Chimes, man. I yeah, have great yeah. memories because. Yeah. Uh, that used uh, Chimes was like my baby uh, okay. as, as a host. As oh. MC. oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I had s- thousands of people in that courtyard when, when there was a courtyard of, so- of sorts. Uh, we yeah, the courtyard, yeah. Yeah, the courtyard where um, Bon Santé used to be. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I was the one that did a 98 to 99 countdown party in that court. Okay. Oh. In the storm, <laughs> man. Microphones open, oh. rusted and shit and all, you know? Yeah, yeah. It was wild. That was a wild okay. night. Never forget that one. Yeah, yeah, I love Chimes Chime. Back then, it was wild. No, it was kicking. Yeah, kicking. It was kicking, yeah. But, you know, sure. sad to hear about what happened in Berlin. Now, that was mm-hmm. January this year. Now, we're into 2020. That's right. John, has give, John Molina has given us 
what's been happening with him. <laughs> We've been journeying this, you know, with him so far in the show. Yeah. So now we're in June 2020. What are you up to? Absolutely nothing. I'm on my, you know, on my forced uh, sabbatical, this time around sabbatical. <laughs> the dirty word has surfaced again. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 this time you put an F in front of it. For sabbatical. Uh, so you, you, so you, since January, January to now, you've mm. been doing nothing. Absolutely nothing. I'm just, I'm just by kicking choice. back. By choice. Or really forced. Which no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I actually, I need, I need this break now. Okay. Yeah, I really. So do. it's not a forced yeah. sabbatical. I mean, it's been, it's been a tough five years, you know. So this is called tough. a do fuck all sabbatical. Yeah. <laughs> I want, I want to do fuck off for a little bit you know, for as long as I can. Okay. And then I'm for as long waiting. as you can. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for this, uh, for this, uh, for this COVID nineteen thing to go away. To sort of like you know roll over. I, I, I know things will won't be the same again. Won't be. But that's uh, that's you know fodder for another topic. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I, as soon as it sort of like dies down, I think that's the time that um, that I will start to. Look around and see what I'm, what I can do again. Is it going to be still in entertainment or food and beverage? It will what be you, both. You've been used to both. It will be both for sure. Yeah. Okay, but you do know that it is going to be a different kind of normal. It will be a different kind of normal. Yeah. I know that. Yeah, I know that. Man. It's going to be different. I know that. Therefore, I need to see the um, you know the, um, the 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 landscape. You know what, yeah. what's going to happen. You know the, the food and beverage landscape. Keep yeah. make sure that I know what you're doing. Oh, for sure, I mate. Just want to find out what the hell John Lee is going to be up to after this. Do fuck calls and tackle is over. Uh, you know where you're going to be heading. What you're going to be doing. It's going to be interesting because a lot of people out there. Do, have you know wondering what happened to John Molina? Mm. A lot of people have been want people have been wondering about have him and Dougie do Douglas Oak. Do they have a rivalry? No, really true. No, no, I mean, we got we cleared the air today. It was just really, really. It's nice, yeah. I've got some. I quick, like that part though. Quick fire questions. <laughs> sure. I need to ask you, man. Just sure. simple stuff. Okay. And I've also been wondering, in which secondary school were you from? Me. Yeah. I was from Totak Secondary School. F- you. No, seriously, bro. <laughs> so, Totak, I was from. <laughs> Why, why don't you ask me my, my primary school f- sake? <laughs> Wait, is Totak Secondary still around? No, it's cl- since closed down, I think. Really? Okay, I'm not now. laughing because, <laughs> don't get me wrong, because you would have struck me to be to be a guy from St. Gabriel's, from Everybody St. Patrick's, from SGI. who has sworn that I'm a St. Pat's or St. SGI. <laughs> Just couldn't believe yeah. Totak Secondary. Okay, primary school. ACS primary. Primary school, which one? ACS me. <laughs> I, know, I know, I know, you're gonna hate me, but <laughs> in days of yours and Western shorts. Oh my <laughs> god, I don't believe this shit, man. Okay, ACS boy, well, me. I got that one out of the way now. Though. John Molina from Totsak Secondary. Nothing wrong uh, with the school. Nothing wrong nothing with the school. Wrong, I'm not nothing wrong. No haters out there getting, coming after me for this. Okay. Now, um, how about? Okay, okay, okay. This one, this one. Right. Quick answer, yeah. Quick answer. Trump or Biden? Biden. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Biden. Has to be Biden. Thank God. <laughs> if you had said Trump, my goodness, something's going to fly across I the I can't table. imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, one more, one more, one more. Okay. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Next okay. question. <laughs> oh, I'm going to throw this. You're just going to give a quick answer. Okay. Okay. Heng Siu Kiet or Taman? Taman. Gibson or Ibanez? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh man. Ah. Uh, Wow, both very, very distinctive sounds there. Mm, I know. Oh, oh man, you're making this really difficult for me. I know. Old school It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. Oh. Gibson? Gibson. Uh. Okay, I like you. Okay. <laughs> okay, Gibson. Gibson, yeah, yeah. Forget about it. Gibson. <laughs> Old school. That's what we are. Um, if you woke up tomorrow, mm. get ready for this. Okay. And Liverpool never existed. Uh-huh. Who do you think your favorite team would be? Liverpool women. <laughs> Get the question right, okay? okay? If you wake up tomorrow uh-huh. and Liverpool never ever existed, absolutely. Who don't would exist. I support? Which team Which I would team? support? I'd probably support rugby. I cannot imagine myself what supporting you mean, rugby. Any- <laughs> Dude, stick to the question, man. Football. Football. English football. Okay, okay. Any, uh, any, any, to be fair, any club, anywhere in any league, who would your favorite team be if LFC didn't exist? I think I would. I would have gone for Nottingham Forest. 
I think I would have gone, no, 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 don't, don't, don't cajole me into, okay, never mind, we're going to get into a huge <laughs> argument because of this. Well, but I'm still going to be your friend, though. I agree. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Thank you very much, because I lost a lot of friends who, you know, who were so hardcore supporters for your club. And then, you know, I guess, okay, come on, dude. This is it's like, just banter, me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, glory, glory, man, United. I'm going to vomit. <laughs> <laughs> Not on my show. <laughs> And I won't bother in your show, okay? <laughs> okay. What was the last gift you gave someone? Whoa, me. The last gift I gave someone. I'm going to say this on, I mean, it's going to be put on social media. It <laughs> has to be my daughter. Good. Okay. Yeah. That's all right. I didn't screw him over. Thank God for that. I wasn't trying to screw you over, man. Yeah. Okay. Now, now, now. What would you say to Bono mm. if he watched this video? You can look into the camera, man. It's right there. Bono might be watching. I'd really be very glad if Bono is watching. I, I, I really feel that I, I would be stumped. Really? I'll be stumped. But now you have a chance. I'm going to give you a countdown five seconds. Five. Four. Bono, you're, you're the greatest. That's what I'll, wow. that's what I'll say. The greatest. Yeah. G-O-A-T, man. He's good, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cannot disagree with you there. What's your least favorite song of all time? Least favorite song? <laughs> yep. Anything by Justin Bieber, I think. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh me. <laughs> so can I say that he's your least favorite singer of all time? Yes, but actually, uh, oh, what? I, uh, I like Bruno Mars. Yeah, me I too. I hate the song "Marry What Marry You" or "Marry Me." Or it's a beautiful day. Oh, beautiful day. Hey, no, it's a beautiful day. Yeah. I've got nothing left to do. Because I've got hey, babe, nothing I think I'm going to marry you. Yeah, marry you. Marry yeah, you. Yeah, marry you. I Look, think so. I, I, yeah. just, I just find the, the lyrics unbelievable, unbelievably stupid. Dumb. Yeah. yeah. Nothing it's a to do with that. Bad song. Yeah. Song. Ding bad. A song for dingbats, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's a song for, for months. Song for freaking dingbats. One last question before okay. we close the show. Sure, me. What is one thing? You have ticked off your bucket list and one thing that you have yet to check off. The one thing I've ticked out on my bucket list was being in a cockpit of an aeroplane. Really? Yes, in Australia. What kind last, of plane was this? It was last, this year or last, last it was last year. What kind it of was plane? A, a Cessna. I mean, it was, ah, a, yeah. Okay. So I've never, it was fantastic. La. I, no, sorry, it's a 12-seater. So is it a Cessna? No, it can't Cessna? be a Cessna, man. Okay, sorry. Then, yeah. then what, what is that? It's a what? It's a private jet? Private jet, yeah. It's a jet engine plane. Propellers? Uh, it's just a question, private man. jet. Private jet. Okay. Private jet. And you were in a cockpit? I was in the cockpit. Wow. The, the pilot, you know. So that was something on your bucket list? Oh, was... yeah. Hell yeah. I've always wanted... I'm scared of heights. So this is something which is like, whoa. Well, that's kind of weird. So I asked right? him a lot of questions about how, you know... For a guy who's scared of heights, yeah, yeah, yeah. something on your bucket I know. List? I just wanted to get get that part away. Don't tell, me, don't tell me that you also have something in your bucket list though you're scared of heights that you want mm -hmm. to jump off a good, perfectly good plane. Yes. No that shit. is something I want to do. Yeah. But I haven't had the guts to, to do Really? It. Yeah. And that's in your bucket list? Yeah. So okay. bucket list. That's something which I have so, yet to do. So that's one thing I've already covered for you that <laughs> you want to do but you have yet to do. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, I, maybe I won't do it. I don't know. But okay. Yeah. Okay, I mean, like you, I'm also scared of heights. <laughs> you want to? I don't have, no, I don't want, I don't freaking want to, dude. There's no damn way I would even stand somewhere and look down and go, oh shit, man, no. No, 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 no. no you know, no. I've never been on that uh, roller coaster thing in USS, never. I've never. I would not do it. You think I have? Not for, <laughs> not for a million bucks, man. <laughs> you can pay me all the money in the freaking world, man. You won't get me on Same shit me. like that. There's nothing. Same, in, man. Nothing in, you can pay me to do stuff like that. There's no way, there's no way in hell. But anyway, um, thank you, John. Thank for, you, Chris. Thank you for being my kopi kaki for this. It's been a it's riveting fantastic. conversation. Oh, yeah, not only that. I mean, it's good to touch base with you again. And, yeah, uh, yeah, it's great. I wish you the best you. in all that you do, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank and you so much, likewise Chris. Likewise with you, for you as well. Thank that, you. Uh, 
that you you know sooner or later you get a bug is gonna come back and bite you hard <laughs> you know, we'll be in touch and, yeah. and um, you know yeah. let's have that uh, that false uh, bintang or whatever I mean you know right? <laughs> <laughs> well we want to do a bintang dude it's gonna be in Bali it's gonna be in Bali <laughs> and Hell we yeah. can do that in we Bali. can do that in Bali yeah, yeah. Everyone, thank you so very much for being with us. And this has been John Molina with me, Chris Hansen on Kopi with Chris. Um, it's been great having this chit chat with him. Uh, for those of younger people out at, uh, back home, go find out more about John Molina. Go find out about how we used to be rocking Singapore in a, at a time when we were really rocking <laughs> the nation. Go find out more. Um, in meanwhile, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe, okay, to the show. Uh, there's going to be more coming up. Watch out for uh, Kopi with Chris next week again uh, when we're back with some more guests in the studio. In the meanwhile, stay safe, stay home, and stay sane. Catch you guys again soon. Bye.